All right, I'm gonna show you how to make a cloud brush. Now, I already have a video on my YouTube on how to make fog. And in that video, I use overlays, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a little bit of an older technique for myself personally, uh, at least for clouds and uh, rather for fog. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my updated, my 2.0 technique on how I add fog and smoke and steam or what have you to a image. Uh, and it's basically a custom brush. And then on top of that, from our custom brush, we're going to make it animated. We're gonna make it spin in different sizes and change opacity as we paint it. And then after that, I'll show you a few finishing tricks such as blurring and masking to make your layer of fog really look realistic and customizable. All right, so let's get started. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take an image of a cloud and we're gonna turn it into a custom brush. So we're gonna make a new Photoshop document and I suggest making it 2048 by 2048 pixels large. That's a pretty large size for a brush, but you never know how big you'll need a uh, patch of cloud. And um, what I did was I actually found a free set of brushes online, and I'll show you how to get the, how to install those. You can find it on Google. Or I think it on DeviantArt. The artist's name is A Blue Scarab. So a blue scarab put together, look at them up on uh, DeviantArt. You'll find there's some cloud brushes they have. So once you've downloaded that ABR file, which is an uh, Adobe brush file, go to your brush tool, which is B, right click, click on the gear over here and go to preset manager, then click on load. And here's where you're going to find your uh, brush file, which I'm in my downloads folder. And I've got a few brushes here that I downloaded. I tried a few until I found the right one for this example. And uh, here it is. So PS and GIMP, cloud brushes by a blue scarab, number, 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 letter. <laughs> so once you find your file, hit enter. And there it is, it's right here. And I've got two, because I already had it imported. But now you have access to those brushes. So that's how you install brushes with Photoshop. So I'm gonna delete this one. I don't need two of them. All right, now once you've done that, they are in Photoshop's folder. You don't need to move it or do anything like that, and you have all those brushes uh, at your disposal. So I'm gonna scroll down, and there's a few cloud brushes in this brush set that are valuable to me. Uh, some of them I don't care about, but there are some good ones, such as this one. The reason why I like this is because it's not a circle, it's not a solid chunk of cloud, but there's kind of some patchiness to it. Another one that might be usable is this one, although it's a little bit thick in the middle. And also this one right here, but we need to size it up. You can hit your bracket keys to size up your brush. That one's pretty decent because it's got a hole in the middle. It's kind of edgy. It's, it's kind of patchy around the edges. And honestly, you could use these cloud brushes to make one solid semicircular cloud poof in the middle of this canvas. So what we want to do to make our custom brush, I'm going to go back and undo these, is let's use this first patchy cloud brush. So that is number 740, I think that's the number, maybe that's the size of the brush. Oh yeah, that's the pixel size. So we're gonna use this brush, the first one I tried, and we're gonna use the color black on top of a white canvas and right in the middle, right there. Now, the trick to getting a good cloud brush, and you can, you can find images of clouds online for free, and you can use those for sure, but you wanna make sure that it's one that doesn't have uh, shading happening, like a bright spot from the sun and then shadows on the other side. You wanna make sure that it's not one that's just too solid and, you know, like, like I said earlier, kind of a blop, uh, a circle of cloud that's boring and won't work good for this example. You wanna find the one that's very patchy and can work as it rotates, because our, our brush is going to rotate randomly, and we want that to give it more variety. Uh, and we don't want it to be noticeable. So I'm gonna start with this one. So once you've painted your black cloud onto a white canvas, all you need to do to make this into a brush is like two clicks. You click on edit and then define brush preset and then name it. So I'm gonna do cloud brush, if I can type right, cloud brush example. Yeah, I cannot type this morning. There we go. So now look, my, my brush has already turned into the brush I just made. All right, so once you've made your own custom brush out of that other brush, now we're gonna customize it and then save that as pretty much our, our finished uh, dynamic brush, if you will, because it's gonna move around a lot. So I'm gonna hit undo to clear this out. Now here's where the fun happens. We need to go to our brush settings. For me, it's over here and it looks like this. If you don't have that, simply go to window and brush settings or F5. And now we've got a really complicated looking dialogue that probably scares a lot of people away, but don't worry, it's actually pretty easy to understand. So the first thing we want to change is the spacing, which is how far apart each brush stroke happens. For our first try, we're going to have them about equally spaced, so not really overlapping too much like that. So what happens when I paint, and I'm going to size this brush down a little bit so we can really see what's happening, is boop, 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 boop. It's doing that, right? Nothing special. 
Okay, we're going to turn on shape dynamics and size jitter. So now what's happening is size is jittering, random size for each brush stroke. Let me undo to clear that out. Let's do angle jitter all the way up. So now the size and the angle is jittering. See that it's rotating, it's sizing itself, mostly random. Let's put that all the way 100%. There we go. Next is scatter. This will keep the brush strokes from happening along a straight line if you paint a straight line. So this will actually scatter them kind of on a, you know, a parallel axis from your painting stroke. So see that? It's jumping around left and right. So that gives a little bit more randomness. I like that. And last but not least is the opacity jitter. So you don't put this out 100%, but maybe just a little bit, like 25, 30%, so that the opacity will change as you paint, maybe a little bit more. And that just gives a lot more variety because you know clouds in real life and fog is very random. There's no pattern to it. You don't want it to be a recognizable pattern. So we want as much variety and randomness as we can get. And these are a little far apart, so let's squeeze them together a little bit. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. It's a little harsh, honestly. So I, I like clouds that are softer. Um, this looks kind of like foliage or something, but don't worry, we will fix that. And with some blur, it'll look like some pretty realistic fog later. Okay, so we're pretty much done. Now to save our changes to our dynamic brush, let's close that, right click, go to the gear and click new brush preset. So now I'm gonna name this dynamic cloud brush. There we go. So we've got, we've got two. And look at that. It's got a little brush stroke there, little little paintbrush. That means there's actually settings and you know dynamic stuff going on, as opposed to this boring one, which just is the same, totally useless cloud. Uh, this one is fun. Ooh, that looks pretty cool, huh? With a larger size, you can see the softness, you can see the detail, and it looks really cool. So let's use this in an actual image. All right, so I'm gonna use this image. Now, here's a, a tip before we get started. Images that are darker work better with fog overlays or fog brushing. Why? Because the fog is white. If you're painting fog and smoke onto a bright background or a, you know, a daylight photo, it's not gonna be visible because everything else is already you know above that halfway point of values and the fog's just gonna be a very subtle touch. So the darker an image, the more dramatic your smoke and fog and whatever layers will stand out. Um, that's why I like to use these on, you know, dark photos like Gotham type, you know, noir, grungy dark photos or fantasy that's kind of on the darker end or at least with a dark background, fog will work really good. So first you want to make a new layer. So click on here and down in your layers panel, this little page icon gives us a blank new layer. I've already got my brush uh, selected, but it's black. We don't want black. We want um, white. So you can hit D, which will make your colors black and white, but it's actually, we want it white and black, so hit X. There we go. So that will invert your colors. So now white is the foreground and black is the background. And for the brushes, all that it cares about is your foreground color. So now we've got white, yay. So let's size it down a little bit. And I'm gonna start with a 50% opacity. To do that real easily, just hit the number five on your keyboard and your opacity up here, up on the brush setting should jump down at 50%. Or you can of course, you know, do it yourself. So I'm just going to try uh, one first pass of 50% fog. Okay, now I'm going to make it a little bit larger and drop it down to maybe 30% by hitting number three. Some bigger chunks and even a little bit larger. See how it jumps around? That's good. We want that. And remember, fog is heavier on the on the ground and then it gets less dense up as it goes upwards, you know, vertically. So you do need to have a, a little bit of an understanding of the physics of smoke and fog, because if you don't, then people will will know, oh, well, that's obviously fake, because that's not how smoke works. So uh, this looks pretty terrible right now, but that's okay. Let's try and um, add some blur. So before we just go ahead and Gaussian blur this layer, let's turn this into a smart layer by right clicking on it and going convert to smart object. Now what that does is it will allow us to uh, change any of the filters we apply later at any time. It makes it non-destructive. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Just to get rid of some of the rough details, let's add about 10 pixels of blur and hit okay. All right, now still look, not looking amazing. Now the next step you can do to uh, add some more subtlety and softness to your uh, layer is hit the mask button or add layer mask. Now we have a mask for this layer and we're actually going to paint black clouds onto the mask. Now what's that going to do? Black is going to make the sections 
paint it over, disappear, and anything white in the mask is going to stay visible. So I just flipped my colors on my brush by hitting X. Now my color is black for my brush. Now I can paint these black clouds onto this mask layer. See what it just did? I'm gonna alt click my mask. That's what I just painted for my mask. So the black again is transparent or gone and the white is visible. Now when that's applied to this layer, that's making some of my white clouds that I painted earlier disappear. And this looks pretty nice. It's kind of a stringy, kind of a, a, a like a steam type fog. Uh, and depending on how you brush, you know, you might be able to get different effects. Um, if you want it more solid, then, you know, maybe you can blur the mask a little bit. This looks pretty decent. It's, again, it's kind of a subtle fog. Now, if I, uh, with my mask selected, I can do Control L for levels or Command L in Mac. And I can actually brighten or darken this mask, which will bring some of the details back depending on how you want. So uh, brightening up with curves or levels on your mask can uh, give you some more control. You can of course blur your mask or you can blur your layer again. So I'm gonna double click my Gaussian blur and look, it's still there. 10 pixels, pretty cool, right? With a normal layer, you can't do that. But with a smart object, you can. You can always go back and adjust things. Now that looks pretty cool, I like that. So what's happening is the mask is still kind of rough. The mask is not blurred, but the layer itself, see if I can just view the layer well, it's white, so you can't see anything. Let me add a layer of black so you can see. There we go. All right, so this is our fog layer without, you know, the picture. Boom, see that? So the mask is rough. It's kind of edgy, but the actual fog itself is blurred, like you see right here. It's very soft and blurry. So that's kind of a cool combination of, of looks. And you can, of course, uh, if you want to get real fancy, you can make a mask for your subject. In other words, cut your person out and make them the foreground. Then you can put a layer of fog behind them. I'll do that real quick by using the Select and Subject, which is Photoshop's really cool way of automatically selecting your subject. About 80% of the time, it's very useful. And this actually did a pretty good job. All right, so I'm going to duplicate my layer. Yes and I'm going to hit the mask button because I had the selection here. It's going to turn my selection into a mask. Awesome. So the, see how she is white? That means she is visible and the background behind her is invisible. So in other words, I have her as a foreground. And now I'm going to add a layer underneath her body. Again, her body is this top layer. This bottom layer is everything else, the background, the green, you know, the trees. So this here's an in-between layer. In other words, this layer is behind her. So look, if I paint, look at that, it's behind her pretty cool. So now I can make a background fog layer, which really, really, I feel increases the realism um, and just kind of sells the fact that, hey, this fog is not just on top of the image, right? It's not just an overlay, which can look, you know, fake if it's not, if it's not done well. But this fog is actually like in the scene, you know, it's behind her. And now I'm going to add some blur because remember things get farther away, they get blurrier, especially with fog, it can be very soft. There we go. And now I can move this maybe down a little bit, maybe make it a little less uh, opaque by hitting some transparency, maybe 70% or 50% transparent right there, 50. That looks decent. I mean, for a really quick job, <laughs> doesn't look bad. Um, and we can see the fog is going behind her and there's also some fog in front of her, especially down here, you can really see it. Now real quick, let me show you what my personal cloud brush looks like. Now I made this cloud brush maybe a year ago and I've been using it ever since and I love it. Uh, however, I cannot find where the original image came from, which really made me sad because I wanted to have you guys make the same exact cloud brush, but mine looks like this. This is the cloud brush that I love. Um, let me paint which one, it's like that. So you can see it's soft. There's not a lot of shade going on and there's variety. So as I paint and it spins around, it gives a really even smoky look. So if I were to paint some fog on top of her with this brush, it would look something like this. And I have this at 30% opacity. So the more I paint over, it'll become more and more visible. Nice. And with a little bit of blur, maybe not 100 pixels, maybe, you know, like six or seven pixels just to get rid of some of the detail. And, uh, you know, moving the layer down if it's too much. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can also, you know, stretch things, give it a little bit of motion, like, like the fog is blowing by. A um, lot, lot of options here. You just got to get creative. Think about your scale. Think about your perspective. Don't forget about blurring and masking um, opacity of those layers. And of course, a background layer, if it fits into your scene, can really help uh, give a three-dimensional sense to your fog. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped you learn something new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.